This is Math 152. We are looking at section 2.5, part 1. And we're going to do just a little bit of work with work and force and just see some applications of some of the stuff that we've been doing. Um, and so things you know, probably uh, force is mass times acceleration. So force is uh, some mass um, they, and multiplied by the acceleration. Sometimes these are measured often in newtons. Uh, newtons is uh, accelerate one kilogram at a rate of one meter uh, per second per second. Work is what force does on objects. Uh, force does works on objects. And so work is force, we can think of it as force times distance. Uh, if, if something's being moved, the force times the distance is the amount of work that it does. So for example, if we had a constant, now that's gonna change, right? In a calculus class but if we just start with this idea if we just have a constant force let's say it's of 12 pounds um, and it moves a chair from some location that we labels as 0.9 uh, and this will be like feet and then uh, it gets it moved out to 1.1 feet how much work was done well since it was constant it's always the same force over that distance, we can say like how far apart, how far was it moved times that force. And uh, we multiply that out, we go 2.4, and that's going to be in pounds. So if that is a constant force, right, it's 12, we can just take that difference and multiply it out. Um, if it wasn't, we could talk about splitting it up into little pieces like we always do in this case, in this class. But essentially, we'll say, this <laughs> the work is the integral uh, over that inter over that distance for the force and notice we could have done that where the force is 12 is just a constant that would make this a 12x 1.1 1 .1 minus 1 minus 0.9 we get that like if we put a 12 right in here right we take the integral of 12 is 12x we're going to end up going 1.1 1 .1 minus 0.9 so there's our relationship that we are going to use um, work often in joules uh, this is force, often in uh, newtons. And then, if we are in uh, different unit, you know, different uh, measurement units, we'll have we'll have different units. That is that basic idea about uh, force. If instead of it was a constant force on this problem of twelve pounds, let's say that it was twelve um, x. Like, let's say that it took. Um, as you're moving that chair, that force has to increase. So let's set that up. The amount of work then would be from 0.9 to 1.1, 12x dx. And you can get there from there. What's interesting on this one is uh, there's some symmetry. We actually get 2.4 again. So, but if we had moved it a little bit further, let's say we move this out to 1.5. I get 8.64, but if we did that here, 1.5, got a 7.2. All right, so there is that idea. So we're going to apply this idea of work and force to a couple things. And first thing we'll talk about is uh, just springs. Um, so we have some spring, and it has some natural resting place right, where it just sits there alone. And you can push on the spring to compress it, or you can pull on the spring to stretch it out. Let's call this equilibrium. Again, it's just its resting state. And um, this, each spring it has some sort of constant that helps us think about how much force it would take to move it. And Hooke's Law tells us that the, the force on the spring is the spring's constant times the distance it takes to move it. So thinking about that, let's set up a um, little situation. So here's our situation. It takes uh, 10 newtons to compress a spring 0.2 meters. That's good, newtons and meters, from equilibrium. How much work to stretch 0.5 meters from equilibrium? Uh, one little thing that's going on here, This notice this is compress and this is stretch. So if I'm compressing it, x is going to be negative. And if I'm stretching it, 
it's going to be positive. And my force can have that direction in it, in it as well. Uh, and my work. Compressing it, I'm going to say x is equal to negative 0.2. When uh, this is Newton's, and that's a force measurement. So my force, uh, basically my force at negative 0.2, is negative 10. I know that force is some constant times x. There it is. So let me plug in those values. So force was negative 10. Don't know my constant. I'm going to figure it out. When my x was negative 0.2. So to get there, I can divide everything by negative 0.2 and I get k is 50. So now I know my constant for this spring, this particular spring. So I know my force then is 50x. All right, so how much work to stretch at 0.5 from equilibrium? So stretch it's going to be a positive direction. So I want to stretch it from equilibrium 0.5, and that should be my, my force uh, dx. And you can work that out. You get 6.25 joules. Keeping track of the units is pretty helpful. Let me show you another example. That that makes you think about the units. All right, so spring is at equilibrium at 15 centimeters. Uh, it takes two joules to stretch it to 20. Now, um, how much work to stretch it to 25? Now this two joules, notice that's not force, that's, that's work. So this makes me think then, uh, I, I don't, I still don't know the constant. I can get there. So my force is that. But remember, my work is that. And so when it, this is in joules, this is work. So I know that 2 uh, from 0, this is equilibrium. So this is 0 to 5 of my force times dx. This should equal end up being equaling 2. My force is k times x. So notice I can set this up knowing that this is a measure of work and I can get my constant in order to get that next piece. So let's see what we can do here. So two would be, yeah, 25 times K over two. Solve this, multiply both sides by two, divide by K. So there's my spring constant, 4 25ths. So now I know that this, for this particular spring, is that. And so then the next uh, piece of my question is basically, how do I get up to 25? Well, that would be a distance of 10. So the work would run from 0 to 10. That, and then you could get there from there. So next thing let's do, let's talk about work uh, in pumping. So we're going to have this cylindrical tank. Um, it has a radius of 4, has a height of uh, 10. These are going to be meters. And it's filled up to 8 meters with water. Now what's going to happen is uh, we're going to try and figure out how much work it's going to take to pump all of this water over the edge. So one piece of information we're going to need to know something about the, the, the weight, the density, the weight density of this water. And, uh, water, we're going to just be told this is, uh, has this weight density. So this many newtons per cubic meter. And that's good. This is in meters. So, so we're pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to think about just little disks of water here and pumping them out a bit because we have different distances that we're pumping the water out of right so the other thing we should think about is let's set x equals zero up here and as this goes down this increases so this would be x equals 10. okay so let's pull this out of here and first off i want to think about the just the volume of one of these discs, because we're gonna have to pump out these discs. And we're thinking about it in pieces, but remember, we, we could let that n go to infinity and just have it be this nice continuous integral. 
So as we think about this volume, this is this is basically change in x right here, the height of this disk. And then this distance, this radius here, is 4. Area of the circle is 4 squared, 4 r, pi r squared, so 4 squared times pi. And then the volume is going to have be that area of that circle, that area of that base or that top, multiplied by the height, so times that change in x. So there's the volume of, of one of the disks. So the force um, is going to have to be multiplied by this water density. So if we now want the actual force that it's going to take, it's going to be this number times the volume. Because the volume is meters cubed. And there's this many newtons per meters cubed. So 4 squared is 16. So if I multiply that out, so there's my force. So my work, just for one layer, is this. This is how much, um, this is where we're at for the water density. This is that force for a disk. But then I have to get that disk out a certain distance, and that distance is x. So work is force times distance. So force. I just split that up because I know it's going to be there. Now, I have a bunch of these disks to move out. So I'm going to set up some integral of this. And um, be careful about these values because x is 0 up here at the top. And so notice that when the height is at 8, my x value is actually at 2. So this is going to run from 2 to 10. Those are my distances that I have to pull those disks out of. All right, and then, you know, this is a constant. I'd pull that out. And you're good. You can get there from there. Uh, once you do get there, it's going to be somewhere around here. And that's in joules. So there is a, a cylinder. You know, we could have a more complicated shape. We could have to deal with a cone. So let's say we have this conical tank. Again, that's going to be uh, four. Let's do these ones in feet. Going to have that height here. That height is going to be 12. And this is full. But we want to pump it until there's four feet of height left. So in other words, we're pumping the water. This is full of water. We're pumping the water over the edge until there's four feet left. So let's do our setup again. X equals zero here. We're pumping it down. And again, we want to get it down to four, a height of four. Okay, so we're going to pull out one of our disks. Got this uh, change in X here. That's good. Now we're going to, in order to get the volume, we're going to need the radius, right? Pi r squared times that, the height. Um, but let's think about this. I'm going to pull this little triangle out of here. So this is a height of 12. This is a radius of 4. And then it has this side that comes down. If I get down to a certain height, this distance is x, and this is some radius. So if you notice I have this big triangle and I have a similar triangle, which is this triangle here. So where this distance is x, the whole thing's 12, uh, this distance here must be 12 minus x. So from here I can set up a ratio. I can say the big triangle, the height over the radius, 12 over 4, that ratio is the same as the ratio of this height over that radius. And so then from now, I can solve for what r is in terms of x, and I'm on my way to set the rest of it up. Uh, this is a 3. So how about we multiply by r, divide by 3. So 4 minus x over 3. So the radius is uh, 4 minus x over 3. So my volume is 
the area of that base, the circle, times the height. And that's going to be in cubic feet. So pi r squared, radius squared, times pi, times the height of it. Now, the thing that I haven't been told is the thing about the density of water in feet and pounds. And we will use 62.4 as our estimate um, pounds per cubic. So that gives, puts our force at, this is cubic feet, right? So we want to know this pound. So this would be this times that. So 62.4 times that. Right. And if that's our force, well, work is force times distance. And the distance we have to pump it from where the height of where it's at is, is x. That's why we made x go this direction. Right, this would be a distance of three, you know, however far down it goes. So our work then is this times x, right? There's my distance. The rest of it's my force. And since I am uh, pumping this out, let me set this up. I'm just changing the order a little bit. And let me think about my range. This is zero. When the height is four, x has gone down eight. Right? The height is 12. And remember, x is going in this direction. So to get down to four, it's gone eight. So from zero. All right, that's all pretty good. I've got this constant, pull it out. I've got to square that. So 16 minus two times them multiplied together. So 8x over 3 plus this thing squared. Then I would distribute that x into there. Oops, I wrote x, I meant 8, sorry. And you are on your way. You solve this one out, evaluate it, you get something around here. This is strangely exact. And these would be in foot pounds. All right, give those uh, problems in this section a try. Message me with questions or post them in the forum.